This is a real Canadian obsession. It might take years or even decades. And I'm not even talking about the giants like Toronto, Vancouver and Quebec, but in relatively small town. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Ruslan Brinkov and today I want to share with you my experience and uh, some of the top things that surprised uh -oh. me after immigrating to Canada from Europe. Uh, some of the things are probably expected, but some are... well, you will see. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. First thing on my list is cityscape and size. Coming from a really tiny country, <laughs> Uh, like the Netherlands, the difference in cityscape is huge. And the first thing when you arrive here, you see this vast spaces, everything so spacious, so enormous, these huge skyscrapers. It's just very different from even not necessarily in the Netherlands, but any typical European city. Quite a unique arrangement here. And I'm not even talking about the giants like Toronto, Vancouver, and Quebec, but in relatively small towns, such as in Ontario, to name a few, like Hamilton, Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo, they are like small villages uh, compared to those uh, giants but even then you really feel the distances which inevitably brings me to the topic of the car and then whether you need one or not so it, it really depends on what you are doing where you live size of your family if you're single or a couple or you have a big family but the point is that North America, uh, USA and in Canada, everything seems to be built for the cars. <laughs> and sometimes if you can just uh, walk uh, along the street uh, following, for example, some map, and then you come into some huge intersection of the road so that the map shows you can just cross by walking, but then <laughs> there is no traffic light no zebra on the ground so you're basically stuck there like alone in single pedestrian in several blocks around you and you know the rest is just the cars so um, i experienced a few interesting things here after arriving because i didn't expect this kind of things but the point the first main point is that everything is so big it's just enormous the next one on my list is cluster shopping yes and to, to give you some context in general throughout of europe even though the each country and varies from another and every city is different but the common structure of shopping is that the supermarkets and shops are distributed more or less homogeneously and uniformly throughout the cities meaning that you can walk from one supermarket to another within maybe 15 to 20 minutes my feeling for canada is that and probably north american in general is as i feel but uh, I, I can talk only about canada here based on my experience but the thing seems to be really clustered here. For example, you have one block with one or even a few so-called convenience stores, then maybe a couple of restaurants and cafes, some hair dressers salon, money exchange, maybe car wash, or all clustered side by side in one block. Then you can go like a mile away or a few kilometers away. Then only then you will find another cluster. So it makes the car preferable mode of transportation again. But this point is arguable. In, even though you can find some night shops or neighbors shops uh, here and there, but in general, I feel that this 
plaster shopping is kind of standard way of arranging the shops in Canada. This is also true for the giants like the Walmart, the Sobeys, Shoppers Drug Mart, Dolorama, etc. They are also usually clustered and it also usually has enormous parking. I have never seen anything like this in any European city. So many parkings. And then <laughs> peak hours, they are almost all busy. Also, this amount of cars is just uh, different. And, uh, it is definitely something that surprised me after immigrating. This is a real Canadian obsession. The next one on my list is Tim Horton's obsession. Wow. And honestly, I even didn't know about the existence of Tim Hortons before arriving here. Surprisingly, you can find Starbucks everywhere in Europe, but I have never seen or been in any of Tim Hortons, or as they are called here, Timmy's or Tim's, in any of the Tim's food cafes before I arrived here. And it is really a big thing. While you can still find a lot of Starbucks cafes, Tim's is just the Canadian number one choice for coffee or hangouts. You can really find it in every gas station, every corner, basically everywhere. Wherever you go, you will see red or Steam Hortons. Steam Hortons. <laughs> okay, so uh, out of uh, interest, I of course um, wanted to try it. I don't want to talk about the quality of the coffee and my opinion about this in this video at least right now i will just tell that not many things can beat a real authentic italian espresso yeah. i will uh, leave it uh, as it is but if you have any comments or questions leave me a comment below and, uh, i will be happy to talk about it but we are moving forward let's go uh, one interesting thing about Tim Hortons or any kind of uh, coffee shop. <laughs> I'm laughing because um, coffee shops uh, in the Netherlands are the shops where you can find wheat to smoke because uh, marijuana is illegal there, as well as in Canada, funny enough. <laughs> but say, uh, coffee shops that sell actual uh, coffee in Canada, so they have some kind of special slang that they use. For example, if you order a coffee or uh, maybe a tea and tea, you want two sugars and two creamers, you can just say double-double. Wow. Single, single if you want. Next one is multi culturalism. Even after the Netherlands, I take multiculturalism and being surrounded by different cultures, languages, for granted. But I didn't expect that the scale that Canada has will be this big. Of course, given the uh, history and scale of the Canadian government's efforts to attract immigrants from around the world, it shouldn't be a surprise, but still, it, it was um, quite surprising to see in some places uh, where you walk that you uh, feel like you are maybe in India or China, for example. And uh, it also gives rise to a lot of high quality restaurants and um, cuisines based on a particular region from those countries. For example, in India it could be in Punjab. So that is the scale of multiculturalism here. And then, by the way, those uh, restaurants are all great uh, quality. And if you visit uh, Toronto, you can find maybe any cuisine or any restaurant from around the world. <laughs> Canadian way of socializing. You might have heard that um, Canadians are extremely polite and similar to, um, for example, um, British people. And if you uh, bump into someone on the street, for example, the other person will likely say sorry. You are also expected as a common courtesy to apologize. And one interesting greeting that almost everyone is uh, using here is Hi, how are you? Uh, while in the UK it's alright. Both of these greetings 
don't actually ask you genuinely about how you're feeling, how's your day, your family, your work. No, it's just polite way of uh, asking, acknowledging that you are here and now the conversation will start. So you can simply answer for hi, uh, how are you? You can also say hi, how are you? And it's um, perfectly all right. Even though it's nice to say maybe good, thank you, how are you? Or great, uh, how are you? Another, what I've heard, I, I have not met many Canadians to kind of test this out, but what uh, I've learned and uh, heard that it might take years or even decades before you can be accepted, like truly accepted on a personal level into the some group of um, Canadians. Because they will not simply invite you to their house maybe for some celebration, for example. They will be polite and nice and will uh, try to avoid any confrontations, be it in the workplace or uh, outside. But to get on a personal level, it might take real effort and time. Price tags. I'm gonna pop some tags. Money. All right. Now we are talking. Yeah. Okay, your uh, first purchase in Canada might feel like a scam if you are not aware about this fact. So you should know that the price of any product, uh, generally anything, starting from groceries, uh, the food products, to clean supplies, uh, machineries like the cars or electronics uh, they all have raw price and then you pay the tax on top so when you actually buy the product how much is it it, it depends on the province to province because the range can be anywhere between i think 5 to 15 percent in ontario if i remember correctly it's about 14 percent so uh, expect to pay this much on top if your purchase is 100 dollars expect to pay 114 the total price another thing that uh, i would include in this uh, money topic is the tipping uh, it is a general rule rule i would say in north america in the usa it's even stronger what i heard but in canada you still should tip uh, someone in a restaurant especially if you liked the food you can tip anywhere between normally 15 to 20 percent people in these services are highly underpaid and then basically you as the customer help them to survive on those low paying jobs i do not necessarily agree with this kind of system i think that everyone should be paid at least minimum but the system works in this way and i'm just sharing here my observations so the, for example if you you go to the restaurant with uh, three or four more people and your meal costs hundred dollars expect to pay i would say 140 dollars which is like 13 14 percent tax and also tipping uh, maybe 20 25 so you see how things uh, might turn pile up and end up in a, a larger amount. <laughs> this definitely surprised me after immigrating here. So here you have it, the top six things that uh, surprised me and some of them shocked me after immigrating to Canada from Europe. I really hope it was insightful and interesting uh, to you and I would like to hear your thoughts. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them in the comments below. And also don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel uh, to help the YouTube algorithm. And I will be really happy to see you here on the channel. And wish you best of luck with your immigration or if you have moved here recently success and will adapt to this new environment soon goodbye